Hey everyone, newspapers and magazines are forever saying that you need to keep active in your old age, and I guess if Vladimir Putin wasn't a former KGB autocrat, he might enjoy a Sudoku puzzle or helping out at the village hall, but as it is, he's in charge of Russia, and he probably will be till he dies, so this week saw the country's opposition leader fall ill under mysterious circumstances, and in Belarus's friend President Lukashenko remained in power despite huge protests, saving the knowledge that Vladimir has his back, by which I mean Vladimir has most of his enemies under constant surveillance. When it comes to Vladimir, he really doesn't seem to have that much in common with other 67-year-olds, although he probably could recommend a good B&B &B if you ever fancy visiting Salisbury. I thought once heard someone say that he enjoyed a crossword, although it was actually crosswords, you know, the type that you have shouting down the phone at someone in Ukraine, which is a shame because if he won one of those big thesauruses for doing the telegraph crossword, he could hollow out the pages and use it to store a handgun or a bar of gold. In the first of those Russia stories, though, the opposition leader, Alexei Navalny, had to flee to Germany this last week after being poisoned, supposedly by a cup of tea. And obviously there's not a huge number of facts to go on at this stage. For instance, did Alexei add the milk before or after the tea? Did he add sugar? was the sugar bowl actually full of ethyl hexyl diphenylphosphate? The 2006 Litvinenko killing also used a deadly cup of tea, but I guess it's maybe a remnant from the communist days because of that old Marxist joke about how proper tea is theft. Nonetheless, I'd like to know how you have to fill out a job aptitude test at school in order for it to recommend Russian opposition leader as a line of work, given how dangerous it is. I mean, I had one that once asked me if I enjoyed travelling, but it didn't specify that the journey would involve being placed in a medically induced coma. Then, as I said, there's this nonsense in Belarus where President Lukashenko has been facing fierce protests after winning a recent election with 80% of the vote. Enough for everyone to know that it was rigged, but strangely not as brazen as it could have been. You know, the 98% results that you often see in Korea or Africa. You know, perhaps the photocopier ran out of toner that time, though, and it's hard to buy any in Belarus, what with the sanctions. You know, the one hilarious thing to come out of this was when I put that story into Google and one of the top results was an article from The Guardian about how the EU decided not to recognise the election result, which kind of implies that the EU ever recognises elections or referendum results for what they are. You look at the current negotiation with the UK where a red line for Brussels is apparently continuing to own British fishing waters and getting the final say in UK tax changes. And it all reminds me of Lord Nelson putting his telescope over his bad eye and saying, I see no ships. Just looking at it, uh, President Lukashenko has been in power since 1994. That is a long time for anyone to remain in one job. Perhaps it was inspired by that year's big movie, The Lion King, specifically the character Scar. Another big film that year was Four Weddings and a Funeral, or as it was released in Russia, Four Funerals and Another Funeral. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.